Well, the International Court of Justice is reading out the verdict on the Rohingya genocide case filed by Gambia against Myanmar. Let's listen. Je déplore la grave détérioration des conditions and the exodus of more than 723,000 Rohingya Muslims and other minorities to Bangladesh and the subsequent depopulation of northern Rakhine State. The Assembly called upon the Myanmar authorities to ensure that those responsible for violations of international law, including human rights violations and abuses, are held accountable and removed from positions of power. In this connection, the Court recalls that the fact-finding mission to which the General Assembly refers in its aforementioned resolution states in its report of 12 September 2018 that it had, and I quote, reasonable grounds to conclude that serious crimes under international law had been committed that warranted criminal investigation and prosecution, including the crime of genocide against the Rohingya in Myanmar. The fact-finding mission concluded, and I quote, on reasonable grounds, the factors allowing the inference of genocidal intent were present. The fact-finding mission reiterated its conclusions based on further investigations in its report of 8 August 2019. The court noticed that the fact-finding mission in its 2018 detailed findings also asserted based on its overall assessment of the situation in Myanmar since 2011, and particularly in Rakhine State, that the extreme levels of violence perpetrated against the Rohingya in 2016 and 2017 resulted from, and I quote, the systemic oppression and persecution of the Rohingya, end of quote. In view of the function of provisional measures, which is to protect the respective rights of either party, bending the final decision of the court, the court does not consider that the exceptional gravity of the allegations is a decisive factor Warring as warranting, as argued by Myanmar, the determination at the present stage of the proceedings of the existence of a genocidal intent. In the court's view, all the aforementioned facts and circumstances are sufficient to conclude that the right is claimed by the Gambia and for which it is seeking protection are plausible. These are namely the right of the Rohingya group in Myanmar and of its members to be protected from acts of genocide and related prohibited acts mentioned in Article 3 and the right of the Gambia to seek compliance by Myanmar with its obligations not to commit and to prevent and punish genocide in accordance with the Convention. The Court now turns to the issue of the link between the rights claimed and the provisional measures request. The Court considers that by their very nature, the first three provisional measures sought by the Gambia are aimed at preserving the rights it asserts on the basis of the Genocide Convention in the present case, namely the right of the Rohingya group in Myanmar and of its members to be protected from acts of genocide and other acts mentioned in Article 3, and the right of the Gambia to have Myanmar comply with its obligations under the Convention to prevent and punish acts identified and prohibited under Articles 2 and 3 of the Convention, including by ensuring the preservation of evidence.
As to the fourth and fifth provisional measures requested by the Gambia, the question of their link with the rights for which the Gambia seeks protect protection does not arise. As to the sixth provisional measure requested by the Gambia, the Court does not consider that its indication is necessary in the circumstance of the case. The Court concludes, therefore, that a link exists between the right is claimed and some of the provisional measures being requested by the Gambia. The Court, pursuant to Article 41 of its statute, has the power to indicate provisional measures when irreparable prejudice could be caused to rights which are the subject of judicial proceedings or when the alleged disregard of such rights may entail irreparable consequences. However, the power of the court to indicate provisional measures will be exercised only if there is urgency in the sense that there is a real and imminent risk that irreparable prejudice will be caused before the court gives its final decision. The condition of urgency is met when the act is susceptible of causing irreparable prejudice can occur at any moment before the court makes a final decision on the case. The court must therefore consider whether such a risk exists at the current stage of the proceeding. The court is not called upon for the purposes of its decision on the request for the indication of provisional measures to establish the existence of breaches of the Genocide Convention. It has to determine whether the circumstances require the indication of provisional measures for the protection of the rights under this instrument. It cannot, at the current stage, make definitive findings of fact and the right of each party to submit arguments in respect of the merits remains unaffected by the court's decision on the request for the indication of provisional measures. The court recalls that, as underlined in the General Assembly Resolution 961 of 11 December 1946, <laughs> genocide is a denial of the right of existence of entire human groups as homicide is the denial of the right to live of individual human beings. Such denial of the right of existence shocks the conscience of mankind, resulting in great losses to humanity in the form of cultural and other contributions represented by these human groups, and is contrary to moral law and to the spirit and aims of the United Nations. The court has observed in its advisory opinion on reservations to the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide that the Genocide Convention was manifestly adopted for a purely humanitarian and civilizing purpose since its object, on the one hand, was to safeguard the very existence of certain human groups, and on the other, to confirm and endorse the most elementary principles of morality. In view of the fundamental values sought to be protected by the Genocide Convention, the Court considers that the right is in question in these proceedings, in particular the right of the Rohingya group in Myanmar and of its members to be protected from killings and other acts threatening their existence as a group are of such a nature that prejudice to them is capable of causing irreparable harm. The court notes 
that the reports of the fact-finding mission have indicated that since October 2016, the Rohingya in Myanmar have been subjected to acts which are capable of affecting their right of existence as a protected group under the Genocide Convention. As indicated in Resolution 74-246, stroke adopted by the General Assembly on 27 December 2019, this has caused almost 744,000 Rohingya to flee their homes and take refuge in neighboring Bangladesh. According to the 2019 report of the fact-finding mission on Myanmar, approximately 600,000 Rohingya remained in Rakhine State as of September 2019. The court is of the opinion that the Rohingya in Myanmar remain extremely vulnerable. In this respect, the court notes that in its resolution 74 stroke 246 of 27 December 2019, the General Assembly reiterated, and I quote, its grave concern that in spite of the fact that Rohingya Muslims lived in Myanmar for generations, prior to the independence of Myanmar, they were made stateless by the enactment of the 1982 citizenship law and were eventually disenfranchised in 2015 from the electoral process, end of quotation. The court further takes note of the detailed findings of the fact-finding mission on Myanmar submitted to the Human Rights Council in September 2019, which refer to the risk of violations of the Genocide Convention, and in which, I quote, it is concluded on reasonable grounds that the Rohingya people remain at serious risk of genocide under the terms of the Genocide Convention, end of quotation. The court takes note of the statement of Myanmar during the oral proceedings that it is currently engaged in repatriation initiatives to facilitate the return of Rohingya refugees present in Bangladesh and that it intends to promote ethnic reconciliation peace and stability in Rakhine State and to make its military accountable for violations of international humanitarian and human rights law. However, in view of the court, these steps do not appear sufficient in themselves to remove the possibility that acts causing irreparable prejudice to the rights invoked by the Gambia for the protection of the Rohingya in Myanmar could occur. In particular, the court notes that Myanmar has not presented to the court concrete measures aimed specifically at recognizing and ensuring the right of the Rohingya to exist as a protected group under the Genocide Convention. Moreover, the court cannot ignore that the General Assembly has, as recently as on 27 December 2019, expressed its regret that, and I quote, the situation has not improved in Rakhine State to create the conditions necessary for refugees and other forcibly displaced persons to return to their places of origin voluntarily, safely, and with dignity." End of quotation. The General Assembly reiterated at the same time it is deep distress at reports that unarmed individuals in Rakhine State 
have been and continue to be subjected to the excessive use of force and violations of human rights and international humanitarian law by the military and security and armed forces, including extrajudicial, summary or arbitrary killings, systematic rape and other forms of sexual and gender-based violence, arbitrary detention, enforced disappearance, and government seizure of Rohingya lands from which Rohingya Muslims were evicted and their homes destroyed. Finally, the court observes that irrespective of the situation that the Myanmar government is facing in Rakhine State, including the fact that there may be an ongoing internal conflict between armed groups and the Myanmar military, and that security measures are in place, Myanmar remains under the obligation incumbent upon it as a state party to the Genocide Convention. The court recalls that in accordance with the terms of Article 1 of the Convention, state parties expressly confirmed their willingness to consider genocide as a crime under international law which they must prevent and punish independently of the context of peace or of war in which it takes place. The context invoked by Myanmar does not stand in the way of the court's assessment of the existence of a real and imminent risk of irreparable prejudice to the rights protected under the Convention. In light of the aforementioned considerations, the court finds that there is a real and imminent risk of irreparable prejudice to the rights invoked by the Gambia, as is specified by the court. From all of the foregoing considerations, the court concludes that the condition is required by its statute for it to indicate provisional measures are met. It's therefore necessary, pending its final decision, for the court to indicate certain measures in order to protect the rights claimed by the Gambia as identified by the court. The court recalls that it has the power under its statute when a request for provisional measures has been made to indicate measures that are in whole or in part other than those requested. Article 75, paragraph 2 of the rules of court specifically refers to this power of the court. The court has already exercised this power in the past. In the present case, having considered the terms of the provisional measures requested by the Gambia and the circumstances of the case, the court finds that the measures to be indicated need not be identical to those requested. Bearing in mind Myanmar's duty to comply with its obligations under the Genocide Convention, the court considers that with regard to the situation described earlier, Myanmar must, in accordance with its obligations under the Convention and in relation to the members of the Rohingya group in its territory, take all measures within its power to prevent the commission of all acts within the scope of Article 2 of the Genocide Convention, in particular, a. Killing members of the group. B. Causing serious bodily or mental harm to the members of the group. C. Deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. And D. Imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. 
Myanmar must also, in relation to the members of the Rohingya group in its territory, ensure that its military, as well as any irregular armed units which may be directed or supported by it, and any organizations and persons which may be subject to its control, direction, or influence, do not commit acts of genocide, conspiracy to commit genocide, direct and public incitement to commit genocide, attempt to commit genocide, or complicity in genocide. The court is also of the view that Myanmar must take effective measures to prevent the destruction and ensure the preservation of any evidence related to allegations of acts within the scope of Article 2 of the Genocide Convention. Regarding the provisional measure requested by the Gambia that each party shall provide a report to the court on all measures taken to give effect to its order, the court recalls that it has the power reflected in Article 78 of the Rules of Court to request the parties to provide information on any matter connected with the implementation of any provisional measures it has indicated. In view of the specific provisional measures it has decided to indicate, the court considers that Myanmar must submit a report to the court on all measures taken to give effect to this order within four months, as from the date of this order, and thereafter every six months, until a final decision on the case is rendered by the court. Every report so provided shall then be communicated to the Gambia, which shall be given the opportunity to submit to the court its comments thereon. The Gambia has further requested the court to indicate measures aimed at ensuring the non-aggravation of the dispute with Myanmar. In this respect, the court recalls then that when it is indicating provisional measures for the purpose of preserving specific rights, it also possesses the power to indicate additional provisional measures with a view to preventing the aggravation or extension of the dispute whenever it considers that the circumstances so require. However, in the circumstances of the present case, and in view of the specific provisional measures it has decided to indicate, the court does not deem it necessary to indicate an additional measure relating to the non-aggravation of the dispute between the parties. The court reaffirms that its orders on provisional measures under Article 41 of the statute have binding effect and thus create international legal obligations for any party to whom the provisional measures are addressed. The court further reaffirms that the decision given in the present proceeding is in no way prejudges the question of the jurisdiction of the court to deal with the merits of the case or any questions relating to the admissibility of the application or to the merits themselves. It leaves unaffected the right of the governments of the Gambia and Myanmar to submit arguments and evidence in respect of those questions. For these reasons, the court indicates the following provisional measures. One, unanimously, the Republic of the Union of Myanmar shall, in accordance with its obligations under the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, in relation to the members of the Rohingya group in its territory, 
take all measures within its power to prevent the commission of all acts within the scope of Article 2 of the Convention, in particular, killing members of the group, causing serious bodily or mental harm to the members of the group, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, and imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. Two, unanimously, the Republic of the Union of Myanmar shall, in relation to the members of the Rohingya group in its territory, ensure that it is military as well as any irregular armed unities which may be directed or supported by it and any organizations and persons which may be subject to its control, direction, or influence, do not commit any acts described in point one above or acts of conspiracy to commit genocide, of direct and public incitement to commit genocide, of attempt to commit genocide, or of complicity in genocide. Three, unanimously, the Republic of the Union of Myanmar shall take effective measures to prevent the destruction and ensure the preservation of evidence related to allegations of acts within the scope of Article 2 of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. Four, unanimously, the Republic of the Union of Myanmar shall submit a report to the court on all measures taken to give effect to this order within four months, as from the date of this order, and thereafter every six months until a final decision on the case is rendered by the court. I shall now call on the Registrar to read the operative part of the order in French. You have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Par ces motifs, la Cour indique à titre provisoire les mesures conservatoires suivantes. 1. À l'unanimité, la République de l'Union de Myanmar doit conformément aux obligations lui incombant au titre de la Convention pour la prévention et la répression du crime de génocide, prendre toutes les mesures en son pouvoir afin de prévenir la Commission à l'encontre des membres du groupe Rohingya présents sur son territoire de tout acte entrant dans le champ d'application de l'article 2 de la Convention, en particulier a. Meurtre de membres du groupe b atteinte grave à l'intégrité physique ou mentale de membres du groupe. C. Soumission intentionnelle du groupe à des conditions d'existence devant entraîner sa destruction physique totale ou partielle. Et D. Mesures visant à entraver les naissances au sein du groupe. 2. À l'unanimité, la République de l'Union du Myanmar doit veiller à ce que ni ses unités militaires, ni aucune unité armée irrégulière qui pourrait relever de son autorité ou bénéficier de son appui ou organisation ou personne qui pourrait se trouver sous son contrôle son autorité. All right, a hugely significant uh, order there by the ICJ suggesting there that Gambia's assumption of genocide is plausible against Rohingya Muslims. The court had much to say about the actions or rather inaction of Myanmar and said that uh, Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar remain extremely vulnerable. The UN Secretary General has reiterated its grave concerns uh, and a detailed fact-finding mission has found many irregularities in the treatment of Rohingya Muslims and the genocidal intent was present is what the ICJ has said. Uh, also said that we believe that Myanmar is committed to repatriations, making the army accountable, but Myanmar has not presented this court with measures on what it has done to protect the rights of Rohingya Muslims. It went on to give a more detailed order saying that uh, Myanmar's 
under, uh, is under obligation to prevent genocidal activities. The context of ethnic war was given uh, by Myanmar, but it doesn't hold. The court finds real and imminent risk of prejudice against Rohingya Muslims, uh, and the court considers Myanmar that it must take all measures to prevent all acts of crime against Rohingya Muslims in show military. Uh, let's listen in to the gist of that wording given, uh, be, being given now again by the ICJ. This a separate opinion to the order of the court. Judge Ad hoc Kress abandons a declaration to the order of the court. The text of the order is available from today in TypeScript. It will be available shortly on the court's website. The printed text will be available in due course. As the court has no further business before it today, I declare the sitting closed.